dishes is not that difficult. It's just like max all the ingredients you have and uh, fry first boil them and the, then fry them. And um, because Audrey is also here. So I did another cooking lecture maybe two weeks ago. And uh, in that lecture, I cooked the egg dumplings. So today, uh, what I'm cooking is called spicy pot. And I actually don't know if my translation is correct or not. But yeah, we call that, um, if I translate them directly, it's called spicy pot. Um, and the ingredients I have is um, chili and cilantro. Um, let me check. Um, pork belly. And, uh, uh, rice cake. Some uh, Chinese cabbage. So here's the Chinese cabbage. Um, and some squid. Uh, and then so you can see that. Here is the squid, like a tiny one. This is the pork belly. Um, so the difference is like they, they have the skin, both skin and the meat. And so what I'm doing right now is clean them. And I'm, I'm wearing a glove to make I look like more professional <laughs> and put this um, meat into the boiled water. So um, let me show you. This is boiled water. Can you see that? Yeah. Um, I put that into the boiled water just because, like, later if I cut it, it's easier to cut. that right now and then preparing for the pot uh, that is the chili I need and then this is the squid and the rice cake here and this is the crab stickers I think the meat is already show you the meat. It's really hot and the, the meat is in the pot right now. What I'm doing now is put the meat into the cold water so uh, it's easier for me to cut it. I also learned a lesson, do not cut the chili when you do not have gloves. You see, uh, during the night, your fingers will feel like burn. And if you accidentally touch your face, your face will burn as well. <laughs> yes. It's easier to cut and uh, use half of them.
Can you use any kind of other pork ra rather than using pork belly? Other pork? No, but you can if you want. So it's actually totally depends on you. And I will recommend you buy the pork well, pork belly in the Asian market. I don't know why, but if that is what I noticed, because if I buy that from Kroger, like the meat, they have um another smile. I don't know, like it's not a strange smile, but it's just a different from the the pork you bought from the Asian market. And I think uh, Kroger and other stores, they don't have that skin over there, which I think if you fry it, it tastes uh, good with the dish. Sorry, I didn't hear you, like the car is passing by. They have that skin cut off from the pork belly, if you even get it from any stores other than the Asian market. Yeah, yeah, they have the skin here, like the skin here, but if you buy that from, I don't think cargo, cargo Kroger have the uh, pork belly, but I know that in Costco, you can buy the pork belly. And uh, let's see what I need to do. Um, okay, preparing all the food. So that is the crab stickers. In the Are last crab day, stickers real crab or is it imitation crab meat? I think it's imitation crab meat because it's not expensive. <laughs> and in the last cooking lecture, I did the um, Egg dumplings. So um, that is called um, Cantonese food. And uh, right now, um, the spicy pork, the spicy pork part is from the Sichuan province. So our dishes is more spicy. And the, the uh, Cantonese food is not that spicy. And they usually they emphasize the the fresh taste. I think I'm ready for cook. Oh. I don't know why, but yesterday I, I bought the squid and they just divide the head. Here's the head and the tire. This is the tire. Um, okay. I move my camera. See that. Um, let me add some oil. That is the oil. That is actually a, a beverage bottle, but yeah, I think it's easier to use that to put the oil so to control the the amount of the oil I will put into the pot. Okay, that's enough. And then I have ginger and garlic. Watch this another one. This is hot. Let's see. Let's 
garlic. Ooh. Garlic is ready. I'm gonna put that into the pot. Two pieces of ginger. It will need some time to let that heat. And this is the hot pot seasoning I have. So they, they have specific spicy pot seasoning, but I think the taste is actually similar. So I just use the hot pot seasoning. And then you do not need to put the whole seasoning, just the, maybe half of them. Yeah. And here is the the base, uh, the seasoning, hot pot seasoning. And because th this is called Sichuan pepper, so it will add some nami flavor into the dishes. And I will put some inside. Um, I don't know if you can see that clearly. It's a really small spice. And I will put the popcorn and the flat sticker. Then add some rice cake.
And then the scroll. And the scroll. And Chinese people love tea, so I will buy you a bottle of tea. And when you cook these dishes, there is a lot of smoke. But if you can hear that, um, me and my roommate is just keep um, definitely the news is uncomfortable. So yeah, um, like before I come to the US, some Chinese student mentioned that um, usually the fire alarm will uh, like really noisy just because some Chinese people is cooking the Chinese food such as the um, spicy pot. Actually, almost done. And uh, since we still have some time, um, do you have any questions? If not, I actually prepared a PowerPoint about the Chinese food. Uh, actually, it's already finished, and uh, if you have any questions, just uh, type in the chat or just unmute yourself. If not, uh, I will share my screen. Give me one second. Um, Nico, could you please allow me share my screen? You should be good to go now. 
This is the as you guys already know, so I will not introduce myself here. Um, yeah, and this is the eight major cuisine China have. Like, actually, we have different cuisine, but yeah, to summarize, there's a uh, eight major cuisine we have. Um, it's named Sichuan, Shandong, um, Guangdong, Fujian, Jiangsu, Zhejiang, Hunan, and Anhui cuisine. So that is the different the name of different province in China. Um. Let me switch my PowerPoint. And you can see like the, that is the map of China. So if the province is near to the coast, usually they will have um, more like seafood in their dishes. But if they are close to mountains and we have like different animal and the, that is the reason why a lot of people who do not know much about China, they said Chinese people eat everything so probably those people are from the um, province that close to the mountain. Um, and uh, let me check. Um, I will not introduce like specifically about the like each province um, style, but I will only introduce um, the place where I come from. Um, for example, um, this is the Sichuan cuisine. So. My province is really close to Sichuan. Um, Sichuan is here and my province is here. So yeah, it's really close. Um, yeah. yeah, and the, the one of the represent um, dishes of Sichuan cuisine is Kong Pao chicken. And you can buy that from the um, Panda Express, um, but it's not a traditional uh, Panda. The dishes in Panda Express is not traditional Chinese food, but it's similar. And Mapo Dof, uh, which is uh, Mapo Tofu, and you can buy that in different Chinese restaurants. And it's definitely hot pot and also spicy pot. But we usually categorize this thing like different because one is one have soup, or not another one have only like it's dry. And uh, by the way, I I did my I got my bachelor degree in Guangdong province, so that is Cantonese food, and I can introduce that later to you. Um, there's are uh, some stereotypes about Chinese food. Um, first, we do not eat dogs. We love the dogs, but there is. A more on the do eat dogs. I do not eat dogs. And uh, those group of people, they eat dogs just to because, like for them, it's similar to American people eat turkey during the Thanksgiving. So there is one festival they will eat dogs. Um, I'm sorry to, to tell you about that. Yeah. And then the second thing is, I never heard about that soup before COVID. Um, to be honest, I don't think Chinese people eat that soup. And we think it's gross. Like as uh, other countries, people also think that it's gross. So yeah, we do not eat that soup. And uh, is there anything else you are curious about Chinese food or Chinese culture? Okay. Um, so here is some Chinese restaurant in Richmond near the campus. Uh, the first one is Chengdu, and another one is Peter Chen, and there's a Fuki restaurant. So that one is uh, Cantonese food, and uh, Peter Chen, I think they they provide both Sichuan food and the Cantonese food. 
Um, Chengdu definitely a uh, Sichuan food because Chengdu is the capital of Sichuan province. Um, yeah, they have the dry part, which is similar to today's uh, spicy part. So and it's called pig, pig chitlings in dry part, and uh, that is the god of the pig. So again, I think maybe probably most of the American people do not eat the god, but I'm I, I'm a little bit curious about Bao Chen and the uh, Sahali. Yeah, did you did people from your country eat the the organ of the animal, like the inside of the body. Yeah, you can unmute yourself or type in the chat if you heard my question. Uh, okay. Um, and uh, there are three um, dishes I usually order in Chengdu. So, um, include pig chitlin in dry pot and uh, Chongqing spicy chicken and pork rib seaweed soup. The third one is not. Oh, it's expensive. Oh, okay. Yeah, like the third dish is pork rib seaweed soup. That is not spicy, but it's also delicious. Um, in Peter Chen, um, the soup buns is, because yesterday we I talked with um, Nico, I said, I do not love buns, but the soup buns is the one that is my exception. Because yeah, they, the skin is different from the normal buns and uh, they have some soup and meat inside. Um, I will recommend to you, and maybe your nephews also love it. Um, hot and numbing tofu skin. So the numbing flavor is the uh, characteristics of the Sichuan food. Um, and uh, stale fried shirt pork with Thai chili. Um, yeah, that one is also a good one. But it's spicy, like they have like level five spicy. And the Fuki restaurant, all the food in Fuki restaurant is not spicy. And usually they are steamed like shrimp dumplings um, or uh, steamed chicken feed. I know chicken feed probably not uh, looks good, but it's really delicious for me. Um, steamed um, pork ribs. So here's uh, some pictures about the, um, this food. And the, specifically for Cantonese food, we have we, we call it dim sum. And usually the, the old people, like they will only order one or two dim sum, like it's really small dishes, and then a pot of tea. And then they will um, eat the uh, dim sum and with a group of friends, like maybe three people with two dim sum and then one pot of tea and they can talk like gossip or share information and doing the whole whole morning and until noon. Here is one special way to order dim sum. So we do not um, pay for the money like um, by the, like we do not have a how to say, menu of the food because every day it's, it can be different. So we only have this checklist, dim sum checklist. And if you buy one um, dishes and they will, you will have a stamp in the um, list. And then you can use this list to pay for the money. Okay, and there is a really interesting way to, uh, when people pour a, pour a cup of tea for you. So it's actually about a, a really old story. Um, so um, I call it finger tap rules and it's, I actually do not know how to translate it, but uh, Chinese people from all the province might be don't, do not know this rule. But if you did that, like when people from Guangdong or Hong Kong poured a tea for you and they will be really surprised um, because I introduced this, um, before I introduce this uh, three gesture, I will tell you a story. So uh, if you have ever 
if you have seen some dramas about an ex Asian China, you may know that in Asian times, a Chinese minister was required to get down on his knees and express his thanks to the emperor. So if he received a reward in a long, long ago, an emperor and his minister and secretly visit the country to get to know how was the citizen's life. And they went to a restaurant and at the dinner table, the emperor poured a cup of tea for the minister. And the minister wanted to express his gratitude, but he could not kneel down. If he did that, like everyone in the restaurant will know the emperor is coming. So but if, in, if he do not express his gratitude, that is rude and it's implied and that one is the emperor. So in, at the end, he like find one way to solve the problem. He used his hands to do a kneeling posture and then this gesture gradually um, involved uh, into the finger tap rules nowadays. So right now, if um, for example, if, if my grandfather poured a cup of tea for me, um, I will do that and knock, knock the table three times, one, two, three. And if I pour the cup of tea for my grandfather, he, what he needed to do is one, two, three. And if my friend, um, for example, um, Pao Jen, and she pulled a cup of tea for me and my gesture should be here, one, two, three. So that is a uh, small rules about um, the tea, um, finger tap uh, rules if, about our tea culture. Yeah, and um, actually that is all the presentation I have. I, is there any questions you guys have? Thank you so much, Lindai. That was a great presentation. Yeah, thank you so much, Paula. Give me more information about uh, your country and your culture. <laughs> well, thank you all so much for, for doing these food demonstrations. Enjoy all of your food. I, I hope you have people to share it with in your homes. <laughs>